Hello everybody, it's Victor here with a review today on the RX-139 Hambrabi Titan's Prototype Transformable Mobile Suit. Very similar to a Stingray. Uh, this is, like I said, it's a Titan's Mobile Suit. You know, Federation, fa or Federation, the... It's a Federation Mobile Suit with, from the Titan's faction. From Zeta Gundam. Uh, there was three of these, uh in a special unit. Uh, they're more towards the end of the series if uh, you're not familiar with Zeta Gundam. Uh, doesn't look like much but they're actually fairly powerful. I'd almost say they're like the like a goof like a goof from a original Gundam but Zeta Gundam form almost. So, yeah. Now this particular one I got from Tatsu Hobby if you like what you see here, you could uh, pick one up there. They're twenty dollars and eighty-five cents. Yeah, focus, focus. Close enough. Yep. That's that. Um, it does come with a few accessories, and it does transform. It's not a particular part swapper, so that's a good thing if you're worried about that. Let's take a look at the manual real quick. It's your basic uh, high-grade UC manual. Got the specs on the mobile suit. A nice front picture. The back, the hook. And different moving parts the hands, picture from the the kit, but taken from the anime, some actual screenshots from the anime, color guide, so on. Open the book. We got a little information on the mobile suit itself. And it's mobile armor mode, it's heat whip, energy electrical whip thingy, other Titans mobile suits in the high grade UC line that you could pick up. Um, he also comes with a sticker sheet. I did use all the stickers on this. Uh, he came with the beam rifle. That could also be used as a like a spear or like a javelin type of thing. And you can just hold it from this end, and, you know, like stab stuff. He does come with two blue beam sabers. And they have holes on the bottom of them. What they're for, I do not know, because the beams do not fit in the the pegs don't fit in the holes. And he comes with this heat. <clears throat> I don't know if it's really a heat rod, because that's the goose is called. But you know, it's just like the wire and this thing, and it wraps around stuff and it electrocutes it. And it is detachable. And you just plug it in like so. There you go. So you have to be incredibly careful because this is uh, this part right here, it's two parts and there's this very tiny small peg that holds it together. And just trying to put it into, you know, switching it back and forth in the hand, I broke the peg. So I just super glued it together. You know, not a big deal, but just be careful of that. And another note, this thing, the end part, it doesn't fit very well. It falls off very simply. As does the wire. It doesn't really fit 100% you know, securely in there. So you just gotta be careful with it because it could fall out. Uh, he does come with a few sets of hands. Two weapon hands or open. Oh yeah, two weapon fists. Yes, I have it on there and on the beam rifle. And it comes with an open hand. It's kind of boring though, you know, not a whole lot of going on there. It's not very dynamic. And it comes with two closed fists. And the unique thing about this mobile suit is that they're not on bowl joints, they're on pegs. So I thought that was a little interesting. Alright, let's take a closer look at the mobile suit now that I have all the accessories and whatnot out of the way.
Good. As you can see, its transformation is very similar to the Epions. Or you could say the Epions is very similar to this one because this mobile suit came out a good 10 years before the Epion. Look on the underneath. Some claws. At the back. Got two like little beam pistols, much like the Rikdias. Let's take it off the stand. Slightly closer look at the tail, as you can see it does move. Alright. Now to transform it, pretty much all you really need to do is just fold the tail up, pop the legs down on the sides like they were. And push that out. Flip the feet. And you can see this part here, so you just gotta push that in on both sides. So you bring the side skirts forward, pull the hands down, rotate, there you go, put the claws all the way to the back, like so, and there you go, there you have it, that's the transformation of the helm robbery. And the wings do move, so you could push them back or keep them forward, however you like. Now this kit isn't painted, it is a, uh, but it is panel lined and stickered up. Uh, okay. Some, oh yeah, and there's a sticker that was supposed to be up here, the one of the pink, it fell into there, and I'm too lazy to take it apart and put it back on. It's, so yeah, it's just gonna have the. I don't know, you can't really see it. It's right in there, you can slightly see it. Yeah, see, now these aren't uh, movable or removable. So you can't hold them in his hand, so they stay firm in the back, so you know you don't expect to take them out. And he has no head articulation whatsoever. But he does have the waist articulation because you know it's this whole middle section is one whole piece, including the shoulders are pretty much just stationary. He can't really get a whole lot out of it. And he gets side movement on the elbow, on the shoulders and arms, like that, and it rotates you know, below the shoulder. As you seen earlier, he could bend his uh, elbows. His wrists don't really move because they're on the pegs, so you could turn it in a circle, but that's about it. As you seen earlier, you could you know, go all Wolverine on you. Uh, you got the you know the basic like T joint thingy right here on the legs that a lot of kids have these days, the high grades. So you get splits, about that much. Front kick, no front skirt. Really, so you can just go there because the this, this side skirt's attached to the leg right there in the thigh. So, you know, infinite range of movement until it's something. Now, to the side, not so much because the side skirts do hit the thing. But that's alright. Knees double jointed. So you get a really good bend there. Some green wiring. Uh, feet. Rock back and forth, up and down. Go down a whole lot because of the transformation. And that's about it on the articulation. It's very simple, not a whole lot going on there. And it has these green tubies. It's a red thing. Little white part. hand off and put his beam rifle on. 
There you go. You may just tuck it right underneath there. And you can shoot it. Of course, it's going to be off to the side a little bit. So that's why I have the eye sticking to the side a little bit. It's a fairly long, long gun. And do the same with the other arm. With this like heat whip thingy. In the hole there. Okay. And this just plugs into the top. As does the tip. Yeah. Nope. Like I said, it doesn't. This doesn't stand very well, unfortunately. Even though it's like one of his main weapons, but I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could maybe just wedge it in there, stick like some sticky tack or something. See, and he does have the hole for a peg right there. So you just. in like so. It's mainly a space mobile suit anyway so you probably should you know get a stand for it. Oh and one thing I forgot almost. He comes with this attachment for an act for an action base uh, too. So it got the square connection so you take the top part off and just plug it in like that. This is for when he's uh, in his mobile armor mode. But if you have like a, a stage like this, stage act, you don't really need it because it's you know fully pulsable. All right, that's the review for the Humbrabi Titans mobile suit. This is Vectar. Thanks for watching.